I'm Scott Allen Miller, it's the 18th of September, 2023. This is my vlog of daily life, living in Nicaragua. Today, I'm driving to Managua to go pick up Paul from the airport, and I'm gonna be getting my GoPro 12, which I'm already filming this on, so you know we successfully made it. We're gonna tell you about our day in Managua and more right after the bump. Today I had to start the morning getting up relatively early and getting on the road and driving out to Managua. Now we've filmed many attempts at driving out from Leon to Managua, so that's a little bit overdone. I'm not gonna show that uh, today just because we've, we've seen that a lot. If you're looking for that, I believe we have some of that on Drive Warp. If not, I'll get some up in the near future, but a lot of that drive has been shown a number of times. What I have not shown very much is taking the Pan American across the north edge of Managua from where we come off the mountain uh, near the capital through along, along the lake and over to the airport. So. Without further ado, let's just take the show right in and show you Managua. It was an absolutely beautiful morning. Uh, we made good time coming out from Leon, no problems at all. Was able to stop and, and uh, take care of a few things on the drive. We stopped at La Colonia in Ciudad Sandino, just to use the bathrooms, pick up donuts, that kind of thing. Uh, and then we entered from Ciudad Sandino into Managua. So we started this video just west of the capital, the actual capital National Palace complex and drive through the city. I thought this was a great view. This is shot on the GoPro 9 with a, um, a circular polarizer which does a lot to make it look a lot better than than a lot of the the videos because we, we cut out the glare and it was just a great day for driving through Managua and I like this uh, path because it actually goes through some pretty rough industrial parts of the city but shows that it's a very green city it's a beautiful area um, and of course there is a lot that is not the best along this industrial path but it's interesting to see what the north side of the city looks like as you go from the very northwest corner all the way to the airport which is essentially the northeast corner but it is more or less a straight shot this is the pan american highway as it goes across uh the capital so that was uh, our start to the day. We drove directly out uh, to the airport where we're picking up Paul. He's been in Missouri for the last week, week and a half, and he has a load of stuff for us. Notably for me, my new GoPro 12 is, is coming with him, uh, which is not a big, exciting new camera with a lot of new features or anything, but I am excited to have more uh, pieces and parts in my arsenal, and I will be using it for a lot of stuff uh, coming up very soon. Uh, I'm also getting a new pair of Tiva sandals. I killed my, my old ones, um, which are not that old, while in Managua filming for you guys in a rainstorm, I tore them up pretty badly, so I needed a new pair from the States and lots of little things. Um, the other thing that is large in this particular order for me, there's little things like I got a new hard drive, got some little things, um, but I got a new soft box for one of my uh, studio lights, hoping that that's going to do a lot to improve what it looks like in my studio uh, when I'm recording. So pretty soon we'll do a evening film uh, in the studio and see how that looks. But I'm excited uh, to find have that it's something I have needed quite a bit and I just keep little piece by little piece improving my studio improving my cameras having more and more to make the show so uh, that's that's cool got Paul no problem he had a really easy flight in on American uh, we picked him up he was actually early uh, he was supposed to come in about 11 30 came in 11 10 uh, we got him got out of the airport uh, very easy to deal with it's such a small airport in Managua that it's it's easy to get in it's very cheap to park it's you can walk right in it, it, just everything is very easy to deal with it's like uh, a small rural airport in the United States because there is not any through traffic this is uh, people only come to Managua and there's only one flight at a time there's just so so little going on that uh, it makes it very easy to deal with. We did notice while we were there a new or new to this area Venezuelan airline is now um, available and we now have direct flights to Caracas which is something we have not had before uh, and adds quite a bit considering how few flight options exist in Nicaragua having one that is so different uh, is potentially a big deal so I'm interested in finding out how we might be able to use connections through Caracas to get to other destinations. Caracas itself is not a place we're looking at going anytime in the near future but flying through it is something that we know people who have done uh and and it you know just going through it as an airport not a problem at all 
and uh, if there's good uh, connector flights, that is a huge deal. All of the flights that we normally have here in Nicaragua are northbound. That's the United States, Mexico, or technically not northbound, but Panama, which is really just kind of to the east, slightly to the south, but mostly to the east. Um, there's very little that goes south-south. That's why we go to San Jose to take flights out of Costa Rica if we're going to head into South America. But if we have direct flights to Caracas, that gets us into South America and a direct hop out of Managua, and that could change a lot of things. I have no idea what the prices are like. I have done no research. But it's exciting to learn that a new airline's option has opened up. So I'll be looking into that and seeing uh, how that might be useful in the future. All of my current plans to South America, I already have my flight plans made out of San Jose. So I won't be using that immediately for that trip, even though we've been talking about it. But I will research it for sure. I find it as an interesting option to be sure. And so after uh, being at the airport, we also had to visit Intour, uh, not, not Intour, to Interpol today. Uh, Interpol is part of the process of getting your residency really anywhere, but certainly here. Uh, you need to get a letter that your, your background is clear. So it's a very standard process. There's nothing secret, nothing weird about this. Anytime you're going to be looking at a residency in any country, assume you're going to be have to go to Interpol uh, and pay to have them run your records internationally and make sure that you don't have any outstanding warrants or whatever, uh, any country that are looking for you. So we had already gone through and done all the, the hard stuff, which is providing all the paperwork and paying for it and all those kinds of things. We just had to pick up our letters saying that we were free and clear. Paul and I had no problems getting ours. Dominica, always the one who has paperwork problems. Uh, they accidentally put the wrong date on it for her. It's all a lot of handwritten stuff. And so we had to check our data. It was wrong. She had to turn it back in. And they're like, oh, no, but we can't make new ones. We don't have any more photos of you. And she's like, I have more photos, but they're back at the house. So she's going to have to come back with more photos and have them redo the paperwork uh, in a few days. That's very unfortunate because we were otherwise done. Uh, but we now have that paperwork, which means we are now the next step moving forward on our residency here, which is a big deal. This has been something that's been going on for a really long time. We have a rather complex residency process compared to the average person for a lot of reasons. We're multiple people. We have kids. We're coming from the United States, which adds just a tiny bit. Um, we are investors here. We have active businesses. Uh, and while that potentially gives you some better residency options, it also is a more complex residency option. There are more things to prove, more things to discuss, and more hoops to jump through. Um, and there's a lot more potential paperwork that has to be done. So if you're coming in, for example, as a retiree uh, or or if you're marrying a Nicaraguan, those processes are a bit easier. But in the long run, supposedly, the investment route gives you a little bit more flexibility long term. We will see if that's actually true. But for us, this is the route we're taking. We are very much not retired, and it seems to be the most appropriate. Um, and that it took a little bit longer and more uh, steps to get our residency is not a big deal for us. We don't have our residency yet. We still have a ways to go. But we are uh, very close uh, to being ready for what is known as the interview process, where they surprise interview you at home and talk to you about your time in Nicaragua, your intents, and those kinds of things. Uh, and so that's coming up. We don't know when, but we're really hopeful that we'll be able to do it by the end of the year. Uh, that we have it coming up is one of many reasons uh, that we were uh, interested in me not spending as much time uh, in South America this year, uh, as we had hoped, because we will get that done, and then I can go to South America after that. That is Gordy, our parrot, is screaming at me from the window in front of me. I have no idea. He's just interested in the fact that I'm standing out here, so he's uh, a little bit excited and yelling at me and the dogs, because the dogs are right here. I think they're out of the, the camera shot, but... So that residency process is moving along, and that's, uh, that's a big deal for us. Uh, we did not bring the kids with us today, so it was just us, but we felt like getting lunch, so we went to the Galerias because we, uh, Galerias, uh, because we felt like killing a little bit of time. We had a few things we needed to do, um, and so, because, uh, Interpol wouldn't open for a little bit from the time we got to the airport, they closed at lunch, so we went to lunch there, went to Pane y Vino, uh, and had a nice lunch there. Paul didn't eat with us, Dominican and I just ate. Paul got multiple meals on his, uh, business class flight, so he was not hungry and looking to eat with us, and, uh, and that was really uh, the bulk of our day. Once we got done at the Galleria's, we did just a little bit of shopping, went and did the Interpol thing, found out we had a disaster with that, and headed back home as I have a lot of work to do. We have a lot of things going on. Tomorrow is going to be a very busy day. Uh, we are dealing with uh, Liesl, my eldest daughter, is in the process of getting braces. Uh, we've known that she's needed them for a very long time, but we're doing her dental work here. She's going to need to get x-rays tomorrow and to need to see a... Uh, um, 
uh, oral surgeon. Um, I'm terrible with the terms for, for all the different types of doctors, but she's going to, uh, so x-rays in the morning, and then uh, the surgeon is going to, the specialist is going to see her in the afternoon and read the x-rays and go over what needs to be done. But she, we know that she needs braces. She's already had the appointments for that. She's already had a bunch of work done in her mouth to make sure her molars are sealed, to make sure everything else is healthy, and now they're up to that point. Luchana is going to be getting braces as well, but we're not sure exactly when, maybe in six months, maybe in a year, uh, but coming up relatively soon. Here in Nicaragua, this is worth noting, uh, braces have a tendency to be done at a bit older age than you do in, say, the United States. I don't know exactly what drives this. I think in many cases it is because people pay for their own braces, but I'm not sure about that. Uh, but it is very common to find people in their 20s, especially their younger 20s, uh, who are in braces and will have them for several years. So it's, it's very common to get them between like 21 and 25 and then to have them in your later 20s. So uh, it, it's often misleading uh, because coming from the United States, we're used to people with braces almost always being teenagers and often younger teenagers. And here, you're more likely to see people who are in their younger 20s just getting out of university, for example, who will have braces. And so that can throw you off that often we see people as uh, having braces just naturally being younger than they actually are. This is something to get used to. But Liesl's getting them at, uh, she's 14, so I believe she will have them on before she turns 15. And, uh, uh, they expect that to take two to three years, but who knows uh, with these things, how they work. So she's handling the knowledge that that's going to happen pretty well. She's not looking forward to it. She's not happy about it. But she does say she's happy that she'll get her teeth fixed. So that's good that she's seeing the long-term rewards from that because uh, it's definitely a very tough thing. And Dominica mentioned that maybe I want to get braces too. As you guys who watch my show know, I have very wonky teeth. However, I also have very healthy teeth and doing anything that may disrupt that really worries me. Um, I've lived with having wonky teeth for so long that uh, I think I'm past the point of really having a great reward from fixing them um, and I don't know how it's going to improve the health of my mouth versus just making them look more normal. So that is something I plan to just live with, uh, but the kids are definitely, they inherited my wonky teeth and uh, they need to get them fixed now while they're young and can do it. I did talk to a dentist when I was quite young, probably around 12 to 14, and they said, well, I could get braces, but they didn't feel confident that it would actually fix my teeth at the time, which is something for a dentist to say, because they make lots of money by selling you dental work, right? So for them to be like, we could do it, but I don't think it's gonna help you, seems like it was probably legit at the time that they weren't confident in their ability to actually make a positive impact on my teeth. So that is why I never had braces when I was younger. It was not that we uh, couldn't, it wasn't that we didn't consider it. And uh, we did actually talk, I remember talking to the doctor and him being like, nah, I don't, I don't think it's a good idea. Um, especially because my teeth were healthy uh, and I did have my wisdom teeth out many years later. Like that was a known thing. Uh, but other than that, uh, so lots of dental work going on tomorrow. It's going to be a very busy day and we need to run out to the beach for some meetings. So we're just going to be super busy. So today we really needed to get back and get back to work and, and everything after the day. So that is pretty much our day. I'm keeping it kind of short. We're working hard to make sure that the videos are caught up and we're not falling behind. Uh, and we are recording this on the GoPro 12 for all of the actual me talking, all of the uh, the road stuff, the, the driving stuff is on the GoPro 9. I am really looking forward to trying out the 12 uh, with the uh, I'm planning on getting a new circular polarizer that is not double layered. I'll go through a bunch of that when we actually get it. But currently my so circular polarizer goes over the lens on the GoPro and there is some potential for uh, reflections inside of there. And we don't get the, the best uh, dynamic range. We get a little bit of um, uh, loss of contrast because of that. I'm planning at Christmas to purchase a new lens replacement circular polarizer that I will put on the GoPro 12 that actually replaces the existing lens with a circular polarizer, so greatly reduces the contrast loss caused by using the circular polarizer uh, and should give an even better image. And I'm looking forward to testing out this sensor with the uh, the, the HyperSmooth 6.0 to see how that works in the cars. I think we'll get an even better image. I'm looking forward to trying that out. Uh, and other things with the GoPro 12. Coming up very soon, we're going to do some GoPro 12 test because I want to see how the regular GoPro, the GoPro HDR, and the GoPro GP Log are able to look when we test those out and if anyone can even tell a difference, uh, especially in uh, some bright light scenarios. So that was our day in Managua and uh, things are moving forward with our residency which is awesome. Braces are a big thing going on here and I will see all of you tomorrow.